What's up you freaking geniuses? So in this video I'm going to teach you everything you need to know about exponential growth and decay functions. So what is the difference between exponential growth and exponential decay? Well they have very similar equations. So here we have y is equal to a times 1 plus r raised to the t. And then the only difference over here is that we have a minus sign. So what do these variables over here even stand for? Well, y over here is your final amount, and then a over here is your initial amount, okay? r is your rate, and there's a few different words for it, so some people call it the growth rate, or the rate of growth, or even the rate of change, okay? But in either case, it's an r, so it stands for your rate, okay? And then t stands for time. Okay, and it's the exact same stuff over here. The only difference is the R is a little bit different. Okay, so this is still your rate, but in this case, it would be called your decay rate or your rate of decay. Okay, and then lastly, I just want to talk about the growth factor and the decay factor. Okay, so don't confuse these with the growth rate. Okay, it's a little bit different. So uh, over here on this side, the growth factor is just what's in between the parentheses, okay? So it's just this 1 plus r. Okay, so when what's inside of your parentheses over here, the 1 plus r, when it's bigger than 1, that's how you can identify that your function or equation is exponential growth, okay? And then on the other hand, over here we have uh, the decay factor, okay? And then over here, it's the same thing. It's just what's right here between your parentheses. So over here we have... 1 minus r, right? So when your decay factor is less than 1, that's how you can identify that that equation or function is exponential decay. Okay, so there's your quick introduction. Now let's jump into some examples. All right, so here's our first few examples. So here it says determine whether each function represents growth or decay. Okay, the easy way of doing this is just looking at your growth or decay factor, okay? Just look at what's inside of the parentheses. So again, if whatever is in here is bigger than 1, that means it's growth. If it's less than 1, that means it's decay, right? So here we have 0 0.8, right? 0 0.8 is obviously less than 1, so this uh, function right here represents an exponential decay function, okay? Easy enough, right? Let's go to the next one. So here we have... Um, R of t is equal to 0 0.4 times 1.06 raised to the t, all right? So again, just look at what's inside the parentheses right here. You can see 1.06 is bigger than 1, right? So that means this is a growth function. All right, so here's our next few examples. So this one says rewrite the function in order to determine if it's exponential growth or decay. Okay, so with these, uh, you might notice that there's something kind of different here, right? And it's specifically with the exponent. So normally we just have a t up here by itself, right? But with all of these problems, you're going to see it's kind of different, right? Here we have t plus 8. Here we have t plus 3. t minus 1, 9 times t, or 9t, and t divided by 5, or t over 5, okay? So whenever you're trying to determine if a function is exponential growth or decay, you have to make sure that this exponent, the t, is by itself. Okay, so these uh, exponent rules can be a little bit tricky, so that's why I want to show you an example of each one, just in case you come across it on your homework or test or whatever, you'll know how to solve it, right? So whenever you have an exponent like this where there's addition, okay, you're basically going to break this up into multiplication. So then we're going to rewrite this as y is equal to, and then we're going to say 1.4 raised to the t, and then we're going to multiply that by 1.4 raised to the 8. Okay, so again, whenever you have addition right here and you're trying to break it up, you break it up by using multiplication. Okay, so 1.4 over here is our base, so we just write that twice, and then we put the t on one and then the 8 on the other. And now we can simplify this a little bit more, right? So then we're going to have y is equal to uh, 1.4 raised to the t times, and then here we have 1.4 raised to the eighth power, and that's equal to approximately 14.76. Okay, and now here I'm actually gonna flip the position of the number and this uh, 1.4 raised to the t. So I'm gonna write it as y is equal to 14, or sorry, I should say y is approximately, right? Because we're rounding over here. Y is approximately 
14.76 times 1.4 raised to the t, all right? And the reason I flip these two is because if you remember the original uh, exponential growth and decay equation or function, it's y is equal to a, and then in parentheses, one plus or minus r raised to the t, right? So here you can see that we have a number, the number goes on the left, right? And then we have our parentheses right here raised to the t, right? So we have our number and then parentheses and then raised to the t, all right? So I'm just trying to get it in the same order. Okay, but in either case, you can see that we finally isolated our t all by itself, right? So now we can figure out if this is growth or decay by just looking at what's inside of the parentheses again, okay? So here we have 1.4, that's obviously bigger than one. So that means this function, this original function, uh, shows exponential growth. So let's try this uh, next one over here. So this one's a little bit different. So here we have uh, b of t is equal to four times uh, 0.55 raised to the t plus three, okay? So here, again, you can see that we have a plus, right? So that means we have to split this up using multiplication again, okay? But the important thing to keep in mind here is uh, this t plus three, okay? Whenever you have an exponent, it only affects what it's attached to. So the t plus three is only attached to right here, what's inside of the parentheses, the 0 0.55, okay? So we're not gonna apply the t plus three or either of them to the four over here, all right? The four is basically kind of just floating out here in front by itself. Okay, so if we're gonna solve this, it'd be b of t is equal to four times. And then here, again, we're gonna split this up using uh, this last rule, right? We split it up using multiplication, all right? So this is our base, right? So we're gonna do uh, 0 0.55 raised to the t times 0 0.55 raised to the third power. Okay, so then simplifying this, this is gonna be uh, four times 0 0.55 raised to the t times, and then uh, 0.55 raised to the third power is approximately 0 0.17, right? So then we're gonna simplify this again. Um, so the first thing we can simplify is this, right? So what's four times 0 0.17? Well, that would be approximately 0 0.67. And then we're multiplying it by this right here, right? So times 0 0.55 raised to the t, okay? So we finally got our t by itself, and you can see that the number right here between the parentheses, 0 0.55, is less than 1, so that means we have decay, right? Decay, boom. All right, here's the next one. So f of t is equal to 0 0.4 times 1.16 raised to the t minus 1, all right? So here we're subtracting this time. So you could probably guess what we're gonna do, right? So here, since we added and we split it up doing multiplication, here we're subtracting, so we're gonna split it up doing division, right? So again, uh, just remember that this exponent right here, the t minus one, or both of these, only get applied to what it's attached to, the 1.16, right? So here we're gonna say that f of t is equal to 0 0.4, right, times, and then we're gonna split this up, so we're gonna say 1.16 raised to the t, and then we're gonna divide that by 1.16 raised to not the negative one, but this is gonna be positive one, all right? Okay, so then this is gonna be equal to, uh, I can kind of just combine everything on top, so 0 0.4 times 1.16 raised to the t divided by uh, 1.16 raised to the first power is just 1.16, right? 1.16, like that, okay? So now uh, we, we're almost done, but the last thing we can do is simplify our numbers, right? So what's 0 0.4 divided by 1.6? Well, that's gonna be approximately, eh, approximately uh, 0 0.34, okay? So then those basically just cancel out to, or they reduce down to 0 0.34. And then we have our 1.16 raised to the t, right? 1.16 raised to the t, okay? So we finally got our t by itself, right? Right here, 1.16 is bigger than one, so that means this is growth, like that, okay? So just a couple more here. So here is uh, y is equal to two times 1.06 raised to the nine t. So this one's a little bit different, right? Here, we don't have nine plus t, we have nine times t. Okay, so when you're multiplying like this, what you can actually do is take one of your 
values up here, the nine or the T, and throw it inside of the parentheses over here, okay? And in this case, you'd want to throw the number into the parentheses, so we would have 1.06 raised to the ninth power, and then we would want to leave the T out here by itself, right? Because that's the whole point, right? We're trying to get T by itself out here, okay? So let's simplify this. So it's gonna be Y is equal to two times 1.06, raised to the ninth power, and then this whole thing is gonna be raised to the t, like that, okay? And then we can simplify what's inside of the parentheses right here, so 1.06 raised to the ninth power, that's equal to approximately 1.69, nice. So we're gonna have y is equal to two, or sorry, y is approximately equal to two times 1.69, nice, raised to the t. Okay, so here you can see that uh, we finally have t by itself, right? So right here inside the parentheses, 1.69, that's obviously bigger than one. So then here we have growth, right? And then the last one over here, p to the t is equal to five times 0 0.82 uh, raised to the t over five. Okay, so here we're dividing, right? But we can actually change this to a multiplication uh, and kind of treat it how we did over here. Okay, so we can say that this is equal to five times uh, 0.82 raised to the, uh, let's see, t over five, that's the same thing as t times one-fifth, right? It's like I'm factoring out the t, basically. So then I'm just keeping the one-fifth right there, okay? So then again, I have two values up here, right? The t and the one-fifth. Which one do I want to keep up here? The T, right? So I'm going to put the one-fifth over here uh, inside of the, X, uh, the parentheses. Okay, so then we're going to have uh, five times 0 0.82 raised to the one-fifth power. And then this whole thing is going to be raised to the T, okay? Now, I don't like working with fractions, so I would change this to a decimal if I were you. So one-fifth, that's the same thing as 0 0.2. Right? So we can actually rewrite this one more time as 5 is equal to 0 0.82 raised to the 0 0.2. And then that's all raised to the t. Okay? And then this would be a lot easier to plug into your calculator. All right? So then this is going to be uh, equal to, or approximately equal to, 5 times, and then 0 0.82 raised to the 0.2, that's approximately 0 0.96. Right, and that's raised to the t. Okay, so uh, we got the t by itself. Here we have 0 0.96, that's less than one, so here we have decay. All right, so here's the last few problems we're gonna do. And it just says, identify the initial value a and the rate r as a percent, okay? And I wrote down the exponential growth and decay functions right here just to remind you what each of these uh, variables are, okay? So uh, starting with this one right here, y is equal to 350 times one plus 0 0.75 times t, okay? So here we can see this is exponential growth, right? Because we have a plus sign right here. And this one plus uh, 0.75, that's also bigger than one, right? So that's how we can also figure out its growth. So here, uh, a would be 350, right? So a is equal to 350. And then r, right, that's the other thing we're trying to find, the rate, is just this number right here, right? This number right here that we're adding to one. So 0 0.75, okay? But remember, we wanna write it as a percent. So to do that, just multiply it by 100. So that's gonna be equal to 75, right? So 75%, all right? Not too bad, right? Uh, what about this one right here? So we have f of t is equal to 1.8 raised to the t. Okay, so is this growth or decay? Well, here you can see that what's inside the parentheses, again, is bigger than one, so this is growth, right? So we can use this one to figure out what the rate is. Uh, but first, let's find A. So here you can see that there's no number right here where A should be, right? So whenever this spot right here is blank, that just means there's a one right there, okay? So A is equal to one. All right, now we need to figure out what the rate is. Okay, so, uh, if you see this first problem over here, the rate was split up, right? We had one plus r, okay? In this problem, it's not like that, right? We don't have one plus r, it's just combined. It's combined to 
So to figure out what r is, all we have to do is say 1 plus r is equal to 1.8. Okay, and I'll actually write it down here. So we have more room. 1 plus r is equal to 1.8. Okay, now to solve for r right here, just subtract both sides by 1. Right, those cancel out. So we get r is equal to 1.8 minus 1 is just 0 0.8. Okay, so then the rate over here is 0 0.8. Okay, so that just means if we split up our... Uh, decimal over here, so it would look like that. We could write it as f of t is equal to uh, 1 times, and then we would write it as 1 plus 0 0.8, right, raised to, to the t. And then here you can see that our rate is 0 0.8, right? This is the r part. And remember, uh, we just need to convert that to a percent, so 0 0.8 times 100 is 80, so 80%. So here we have h of t is equal to uh, 1,250 times 0 0.865 raised to the t. Okay, so uh, what's our initial value a? So a is just equal, I'll just write it like this, a is equal to 1,250. Okay, now let's find the rate. So uh, right here in the parentheses, you can see that we have 0 0.865, okay? And that's less than one, right? So this is actually decay. So that means we can use this one to solve for the rate, okay? and just like in the last problem, uh, so here the decay, remember, is 1 minus r, okay? And then like in the last problem, we can just set our uh, decay factor equal to whatever's inside of the parentheses, right, to figure out what the rate is. So here we're just going to say 1 minus the rate is equal to, and then actually I'll write it here, 1 minus the rate is equal to 0 0.865, right? Now uh, let's add r to both sides. So then we're going to get 1 is equal to 0 0.865 plus r. Okay, and then we're going to subtract 0 0.865 from both sides like that. 0.865. Okay, these cancel out. So 1 minus 0 0.865, that's equal to 0 0.135, right? So that's equal to r. Okay, so just like the last one, if we wanted to expand this, we could say h of t is equal to 1,250 times, and then we would write it as 1 minus 0 0.135 raised to the t. So if you found the video helpful, definitely leave a thumbs up down below. And if you have any other questions or want to see any other examples, just let me know in the comment section below.